Welcome to the lab. So in this one, I have two machines. I have a Windows 7 64-bit operating system, and I'm gonna have a Kali Linux machine that we've been using all the time. Now, my particular Kali Linux machine has been updated to the latest patches and the latest exploits, including the one we're gonna use today, which is called Eternal Blue, because it was released just four days ago. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go on our Kali Linux machine, just like we did before, and we're gonna go ahead and find out what our IP address is by using ifconfig. Now, you'll see here, then we use ifconfig, our IP address, or my IP address, is 192.168.56.102. Now, that tells me that since its subnet mask is 255.255.255.0, that this is a slash 24 network. So I'm going to open up ZenMap, and I'm going to go do a search across this network. That way I can find the Windows machine that is on this network, and so I'll know where it is. Now, if you've done your reconnaissance already and you know the IP address, you can scan just for that one IP. So as ZenMap goes, I'm going to fast forward here so we don't have to sit here watching it as it's churning away on its scans. When it's done, you're going to see the fact that it found the Windows 7 machine, and it did find three ports open. It found 135, 139, and 445. Now, for Eternal Blue, it does require port 445 to be open, and so that means that Windows 7 machine has to have file sharing enabled. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to get to it with this exploit. So now that it's done finding it, we're going to click on that Windows machine. Again, you're going to see that this is a Windows machine. It thinks it's a Windows Server 2008. That's okay. Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 share a very common code base. But when I look at the ports and hosts, the way that it responded on 445, it tells me this is a Windows 7 machine. So I'm going to open up my Metasploit framework using MSF console, just like we did in the previous labs. Now, once Metasploit framework is loaded, what we're going to do is we're going to use the command use and then the exploit exploit slash windows slash smb slash ms 17 underscore 010 underscore eternal blue and then we're going to hit enter now we're going to show our options and you'll see here that the only option that we have to do is set our remote host so i'm going to set our host as 192.168.56.101 the windows 7 machine and then i'm going to type run now from here it's going to go and do its exploit we're using a standard shell uh, response, not meterpreter payload, although we could have set that as well. So then I get back C colon backslash windows slash system32, and I'm gonna go ahead and change myself to the root directory. Now, notice on my Windows 7 machine, there was no folder there. Now I'm gonna do make directory, you've been hacked. And when I do that, boom, it's on the Windows 7 machine instantly because I have root access to do whatever I want on this Windows machine. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go into that directory and I'm going to create a file and leave a message to the person because again, if I'm doing a penetration test, I want to let them know how I got in and why I got in. And so I'm going to do a quick echo command and here I'm just going to say, this works on Windows 7 and Windows 2008 servers and I'll put that into a file uh, that is going to be called hack.txt or work.txt. And now you'll see work.txt popped up in the Windows 7 machine. So at this point, I can do whatever I want on this Windows machine. I can move files, I can remove files, I can delete files, I can create new files, I can grab system information, I can create users, pop holes in the firewall, and really just start expanding my access from here. This was just the initial way in. Now again, this is only gonna work on Windows 7 and Windows 2008 right now. There are people who are working on Windows 8 and Windows 10 exploits for this particular vulnerability as well. Microsoft has released a patch but people are not patching quick enough on this one, so it's really been getting out of hand. Now, uh, the good thing is that a lot of people are starting to take notice because of the WannaCry ransomware, and they don't want their files to get hacked, so they have been updating their software. So your services and your systems and your companies are probably gonna be okay from this one, but it is one you wanna scan and you wanna look for as you're going through your penetration test. And this is just a simple example that these techniques that we went through in this class, they are timeless. It is the same stuff we've been doing for the last decade or two. The only difference is the particular exploit that we use. And as you go through and use a vulnerability scanner like Nessus or uh, any of the other products out there, OpenVos, you can start learning which things are vulnerable on which networks and start getting a better repertoire and be able to start attacking those things as you move forward. I hope you guys enjoyed this bonus lecture as I updated this course just a little bit and really show you some of the latest techniques and what was being used in WannaCry to be able to get this ransomware out there.